All right, uh, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Today's lecture is about error rate analysis and we'll focus on the baseband scenario. The outline of uh, the coverage would be the following. We have error rate due to noise and then optimal threshold, how to, de how to decide on the optimal threshold, the threshold and we'll have to use Leibniz rule. So error rate, error, error rate in, due to noise. Let's take the example for signaling to be a polar, which means we have plus A for symbol 1 and minus A for symbol 0. And that's for the bit duration of TB. And of course, we'd assume that we have noise. So A is the amplitude. TB is the bit duration. And in red, W of T is the additive white Gaussian noise. Would 0 mean of zero mean and power spectral density of n naught over two. The pulse shape is assumed to be known to the receiver, of course, but not the polarity. So the job of the polarity, the job of the receiver is, is to decide whether we are sending one or zero. Uh, we will assume for the, our sake that we are using non-return to zero signaling, polar, polar non-return to zero in this example. To start and end of each, the start and end of each pulse transmitted is also assumed to be known. That's we have perfect synchronization. So that the receiver knows where to start, where to end. It has all the needed circuitry. Timing is acquired. Now, if we go back to the binary symmetric channel, there are two types of possible, there are two kinds of errors. Either you send symbol 1, you select 1, when 0 was transmitted, okay, 1 was, 0 was transmitted, but you select 1. This is called error of the first kind. And the other kind of error is error of the second kind, where the symbol 0 is selected when 1 was transmitted. This is called error of second kind. That's if you want to distinguish between them in case the channel is not symmetric. So the average probability of error would be P0 times error given 0, that you start from here and you end here, or the second kind scaled by the probability of P of sending 1. So this scaling factor is important. In many cases, we assume it's symmetric uh, or we have 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and that's not true in general, unless we are told so. So these are called, in green, the a priori probabilities, and these are called the conditional error probabilities. Okay, so this is our assumption and this is our model. Now, to, to work out the performance of the system, you need to, a model for the systems. And this is the receiver model for the error rate analysis in hand. The receiver that performs the decision consists of a matched filter followed by a sampler and a decision device. So the received signal will be matched, will take a sample at the end of the duration, TB, and then we'll get this number Y, and then based on a threshold, lambda. If it is more than the threshold, we'll say we have 1, we'll assume the pulse equal to 1, and if it is less than lambda, equal to 0. Of course, since we are dealing with continuous, continuous uh, range, uh, the probability of being lambda exactly equal to 0, but if even then we can just flip a coin that will not affect the probability. So this is how our receiver works. We have a PCM wave corrupted with noise that's at the transmitter side. Uh, at the receiver we'll have the noisy version of the signal and we will use match filter sampler. I mean we need to sample, take one value and then a decision device compared to a threshold because we have binary either greater than or less. Now let's do the error rate analysis due to noise. Suppose that zero is sent. We'll just focus on one scenario. So we are sending zero, and the noisy received signal will be minus A because we are sending the zero, and the noise is represented by W of T. So this is the signal that we receive. It's minus A corresponding to zero and noise. We're going to use a matched filter in general, the match filter has a scale of K times A, and the duration is TB. 
just to make the math look simple we're going to assume that k a t b equal to one so the scaling factor is k a times t b is equivalent to one at the output of the matched filter we're going to get y it's equal to x of t integration from zero to t b if you substitute for x this quantity will get minus a constant outside the integration and this is the following integration Remember that if we did not use this normalization, then we will have different scaling factor. And 1 over Tb is nothing but Ka. You know that 1 over Tb, if you take this to the other side, it will be just Ka. So you, you might have similar like this expression or different. The main reason for being different is that this assumption that we have made here. At any rate, the output has part of the true signal and part which is due to noise. <coughs> the characteristics of the random variable y, the output of the matched filter, it's going to be a random variable y which is Gaussian distributed and the mean is going to be minus a. This is how it looks. Now what's important to know is the variance. The variance of the output y, it's the expected value of y minus its mean and the mean is nothing but minus a so this is going to be the expected value of y plus a so we are concluding here that we expect two shapes one for the case of sending zero which is our interest now and alternatively we have the other side so now let's look at the variance of the output noise because this is an important subject because the noise is determined the performance, the signal-to-noise ratio at the end of the day. So the variance of the output of the match filter, by definition, is the expected value of W times W at two different instances of time, because the mean is zero. And we integrate over um, from zero to T. And remember that we, we have seen the noise itself. It's equal to the integration over our TV. Then you multiply two terms together, you get double integration. The expected value of E times the W times W at two different time is nothing but the autocorrelation of the noise. Remember that this is the noise, the variance of the output noise. Now, um, if you assume we have white noise, we can proceed because for white noise, the power spectral density is constant equal to a net over two. So uh, the autocorrelation would be a delta function. I will take this expression in red and substitute here. And you know that delta will make the integration relatively simple. Using the sifting property, we'll get rid of the first integration and I will get n0 over 2. The n0 over 2 is a constant, so integrating over 0 to Tb, we'll get just n0 times Tb over 2. So the Tb cancels with the Tb and we get n0 over 2 times Tb. Once again, the first integration will get you a naught over 2. The delta will cancel out because of the integration. The area under the delta is equal to 1. Now the second integration will give you a Tb. So scaled by Tb. And now of course we can simplify with the square. What we get is a naught from here. Uh, and we have over 2. And the Tb is from here. So we're saying that the amount of noise power will depend on N0 and of course how much time it will be uh, inversely related to how much time you get because of the averaging effect. In summary, this is what we have, N0 over 2 TB. So we can say that the error due to noise the probability density function is given by the following expression. So the mean is minus a, and the variance is now known to be a node over 2tb. If you want to write an expression, for, of course this is a conditional probability because we know that we are sending zero. So the, the BDF for y given zero is the Gaussian expression. The only thing is now that I'm writing the mean in terms of green color and the variance in, in uh, red color. So, and then I'm just substituting, the two will cancel with the two, 
and we can write the following expression. Remember, there was two here from the two by, and of course we can, uh, and two here, they're going to cancel with, with this two. So this is the BDF for the received signal after the match filter. Now, of course, if you want to find the error rate analysis, you need to define a threshold. And this is the threshold that if the signal above, we're going to say that we have we have committed an error because we are closing to we are closer to the positive side. So the conditional probability of error given that symbol zero was transmitted is given by the following expression. And if you want to find the exact probability, you are going to integrate from zero to infinity. If this threshold was infinity, I got the following uh, expression. Now, uh, remember that the fact that we are saying that the threshold is zero, we are making a hidden assumption here. We are making an assumption that the two are equiprobable. The two bits are equiprobable. So we took the threshold to be in the middle. Alternatively, as we're going to see later, we should not take the middle value. So this is the two PDFs and how they look. And there is a certain threshold. If we exceed, we're going to make an error. Now, how do we find, how do we calculate this expression? It looks complicated. We have exponential of squared and integration. We're going to borrow the complementary error function. We can do that with the Q function, error function, complementary function. They are all there to help us find the integration. So let's compare these two together. This is, we got this from the math department. And we need to match these so because this error function complementary is available in calculators and computers and they are also tabulated. So a comment about the a comment about the complementary error function and the Q function. So this slide is dedicated. The complementary error function is closely related to the Gaussian distribution. For large value of positive values of of the argument of error function, we can approximate that with a bound, upper bound, using exponential. So these are not equal, so this is always greater, but for large values of y, we have a good bound. We also can use the Q function. You might see this in your notes or computers or problems in the internet. There is error function, complementary. There is error function without the C. So this is the complementary function that starts from U to infinity. We could have minus infinity to u or from zero to u. At any rate, these are the definitions. And if we compare them, we will find that there are some scaling factor differences in the q function and r function. So if we do a change of variable, we'll find out that the q function is equal to the error fun function complementary when v is when the argument is scaled down by, by square root of two, and we have half outside. Or alternatively, we can write error function complementary in terms of the q function. Whatever you have, you can go from one to another. So let's look at the error rate due to noise. We need to rewrite the conditional probability given zero as in terms of error function. So this is what we have written before, the Gaussian distribution, and we're taking the, the limit from zero to infinity. In terms of error function, we need to do some change of variable. So remember that the error function complementary is given by the following expression. So we want whatever inside to look like minus t squared. So we can think of this term as our variable. So we will define z to be y plus a over the square root. And if we substitute here, we'll get similar expression. So by doing so, we have this expression coming as is. I colored this with purple so that you can tell. Whenever you do introduce a new variable, you need to change the limits and the differential. So d zeta, d z will be equal to dy by the root. So everything here in purple will be converted into d z. And also we have to look at the limits. So when the limit equal to zero, z will just substitute uh, y equal to zero. I got the following expression. I can take a inside the root. So downstairs it's going to be n over a squared, and that's nothing but the energy. So n naught over. If you flip upside down, you get square root of n naught over e. So here we're showing, showing how to change the differential and how to change the integration limit. Of course, for the case of uh, y equal to infinity, z or y, or y approach infinity, z would approach infinity. So going from here, we change the variable to z, we change the limit appropriately, and we change the differential. Now let's compare these two together. 
Now we can say that if you look at that, there's a factor of half here because we are missing two. So I'll get the conditional uh, transmission or probability of error will be given by the following expression in terms of the error function complementary. We can do the same for the case of sim symbol one. And because of the similarity of the problem, we'll get similar expression. So if one was transmitted, the conditional probability error will be given by the following function. So in this slide, we have rewritten the expression in terms of the error function complementary. Okay, so now the conditional probability of error was defined as probability of uh, making error given one. So uh, for the case of transmitting one, we are, will be sending a and we will have an error if we take the limit from minus infinity to zero. So when we say zero, of course, we are making the pre-assumption that we have equal probability of transmission, P0, the prior probabilities are the same, and both of them are equal to 0.5. So the overall probability of making error will be P0 times probability of making error when we transmit zero, plus P1 times the probability of making error when we transmitted one. Now, if they are the same, and we're looking at the binary symmetric channel, and equal a prior probabilities, this is going to be the same expression, and we end up with one half error function complementary of the square root of e b over n naught. Uh, we can plot this using MATLAB. Luckily, in MATLAB, there is, for example, the error function complementary as built in, and we can just vary the signal to noise ratio. We can use the db scale to get that. So one of the good exercises and challenges is to try to reproduce exact curve like this one. You have to be careful because you have to select your EB over a note, and then you have to use it, convert into the DB, proper DB scale before sketching. And also you have to use the semi-log Y to get the probability of error because we sketch the probability of error in a semi-log Y scale. So semi-log, as we have here linear in DB. And the expected shape is to have a waterfall curve. So the average probability of error, symbol error in, in binary systems will have a waterfall curve, which means as we increase the energy in dB scale, it will look like there will be a sharp drop in the probability of error. Now remember, if we continue going back, this curve must cross the y-axis at not 1, at 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is the worst probability of error, not 1, because if it was 1, it means that there is always error we can flip and there is no problem. So exercise, it's a challenge, exercise using MATLAB to generate this plot. Now we move into, now we move into a different problem. Let's try to find the optimal threshold. Let's say that we don't have equal a priori probabilities. So what will be the optimal threshold? In our previous analysis, we took lambda to be zero. Why? Because we have symmetry. But now we need to also look at the, at the general case. To show that lambda equals zero, we will have to evaluate the conditional probability of error, assuming zero was sent as the following. And we will get the following probability of error for lambda up to infinity. We do the substitution of variables. Uh, we did zeta equal to this to make it similar to the error function. And we take the differential. And now, if you look at lambda, and we'll not keep it zero this time. So we will find that we have the following variable. And the error function will the error function will be of the following variable. Okay, now let's proceed. For the case of one, we have a similar expression, but now we have a minus sign because we are uh, we are now going into the other direction. So we have a minus sign. And the average probability of error will be the sum of the two. They're not the same now. So we, would, we will need to optimize this. We need to minimize the probability of error. And to do that, we need to differentiate this and equate to zero and, and solve for lambda. Okay? So clearly the probability of error is function of the threshold. We need to optimize, we need the optimal threshold to minimize PE. To do this, I mean, differentiate and find lambda, and then and we will need to use the Lebanese uh, rule. 
I'll just share it with you quickly. But um, we are borrowing it and then we are using it. So uh, in this slide, we focus on the Lebanese uh, rule and uh, consider the following integral. If you have an integral where the limits are function of u, like in this expression, and you want to find the derivative, then the derivative can be expanded like this. It looks a bit complicated, but we're just using a ready-made equation, and we're going to substitute here. In our case, fzu here is given by the following expression. The lower limit is u, and the upper limit is infinity. Okay, and now we'll uh, try to match. So applying the Lebesgue rule for our case, the derivative of the error function will be given by the following expression. I'm not going here into the details, but show, showing you how we got there. And then we will use different, if we differentiate the expression for the product of error, with respect to lambda, then set the result to zero without showing here the details, I will get that the optimal value of lambda equal to n naught over 4 ATB times the log scale. All right, so this is now the general solution, the general optimal threshold, whether you have equal probability or not. And as you can see, it's function of P0 and P1. Of course, we can check the, the case that we're already familiar with. If P0 equal to P1 and equal to 0.5, that would be log of 1, and that cancels and it gets 0, which is something that I already know. So this is the product of error for the case of non-equal uh, prior probabilities. The average probability of simple error for the PCM can be upper bounded. I can just avoid using the error function complementary and use the exponential to get approximate upper bound. And keep in your mind that this is the optimal uh, threshold for the case, for the general case. I also did some MATLAB simulation that I'd like to share with you, and um, maybe I can share the code. We have, uh, I sketched the probability of error as function of the threshold. And in this case, I fixed the EB over N0 to be 5 dB. I fixed a prior probability to be point, point, uh, point 0.1, so we don't have 0 0.5, 0 0.5, we have 0 0.1, 0 0.9. Remember that if you fix P0, P1 will be 1 minus that. And it turns out that the optimum threshold, if you substitute in the equation, you get minus 0 0.1737. We can also do that by simulation, by experiment, by trying. And if you plot the curve, you'll find that the curve by simulation for the polar case is given by the following function. That's exactly what is it we expected. And also for the case of polar simulation, where we have plus and minus, I got the following expression. So because it's less probable to send, mm, sorry, it's less probable to send uh, zero. So we get things shifted. So for the case of, um, okay, th this is the polar representation. And this is the on-off simulation. For the on-off simulation, we expect things to be t shifted to the left, right? Because there is more chances of sending one. This is much less. So it was zero, but now it is. It is. Uh, we we can assume the threshold to be at this side because there is more probability to be on the right-hand side on the one. So this was 0.5, and now it's shifted to below 0.4. I also did another simulation where we um, sketch the threshold as function of PE. So you can see that when, when the probability is 0.5, you get 0. That's for the two cases of sketching the EB over N0. So as you uh, change this probability, as you change this probability, then the probability of error, the threshold will change. Okay, so if we change to lower probability, that gives you the threshold. I'm sketching this too curve. If you would like just to get EB over an, EB naught or EB over naught, but both of them give you the, th the optimum threshold that you should look for. For example, 
in the case of uh, that we had before at point one you can see that the answer is almost minus 1.17 so I'd love to share this with you please try it and uh, visit the website to get some more resources thank you for being good listeners